and we are now recording. Okay, thanks, Stephanie. Um, okay, hi, folks. This is the Amherst Energy and Climate Action Committee, um, which was organized to guide the town through meeting its climate mitigation and resilience goals. Uh, these goals and the plan for getting there were adopted from the Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan, or the CARP, which was accepted by the town council in 2021. Taking 2016 as its base year, the CARP calls for a 25% reduction in carbon emissions by 2025, 50% by 2030, and carbon neutrality by 2050. Uh, this committee has two primary functions, to advise the town council and recommend or propose policies or actions that will help us meet the climate goals, and to promote a just, equitable, and speedy climate response through outreach and engagement of town and local stakeholders. So, hello. Um, let's see, to our to our um, agenda. The first thing we always do is review and vote on the minutes, but we also need a note taker for today. And Don believe, did it last time. And the next on the list would be. I can do it. Um, Tony, I think, it, uh, or Michael. I think Tony's gonna suggest Don's uh, partner. <laughs> <laughs> Want to take notes? Asher? <laughs> <laughs> Michael, that would be great. Thank sure, you. I could do it. I don't care. That's Tony is striving to Michael, do. It. I think you're next on the list. Sorry. Okay. I... Yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Um. Okay. And with that, we need to review the minutes. So I have them here. I found one thing that I just sent to you. Um, let me bring them up. This is the wrong minute. Oh dear. Hang on. Some reason I have. Laurie, I have them if you want me to. Yeah, go ahead and put them up. I have two sets of minutes up for some reason. Sorry, let me just get them over here. Okay, I found one mistake, which is uh, Joe Comerford's name on the second page is spelled with a U instead of an O. It's C O M E R. Yep. Yep. Got it. Okay. And other than that, I did not see anything that needed changing. And if anybody else sees anything. Shoes? You need shoes? Me. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's adorable. Okay. If anyone... Uh... Would anyone like to move to accept the minutes? I would move to accept the minutes. Second. I'll second. Thank you. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sorry, who was that? Uh, Michael. Michael. OK, yes. thank you. OK, and then in no particular order, McElrath? Yes. Roof? Yes. Selman? Yes. Issing? Yes. Goldner? Yes. Gregor? Yes. Allison? Mm, I think Don's probably had to step away. Maybe we'll put him in as an abstention. <laughs> I don't know what to do. He's not right, here. Well, it's a no vote. Um, yes. Well, it's not a no. It's a... Yes. A, a, I'd, a... I'd write it. I'd write it down as a yes, and he can confirm later. Okay. I'm, good, I'm good sure idea. that's what he's. Thank you, Jesse. All right. All right. So you can continue, Lori. Okay. Next on the list is public comment, but I don't know that we have. Do we have any participants? Doesn't look I like don't it. Don't see it. Anyone? Nope. Okay. So let's go right in then to education and outreach. Um, so Don, we have to come back to Don. 
Okay, let's come back to Don. <laughs> um, coordination with local groups. Tony, you're here. So um, tell us a little bit, what, you know, do you have any thoughts? You sent this list. What next? There is one thing, well, I, I can also do transpo while I'm talking about this. The one thing that I can say is in the works with the Elevate group on campus is we're trying to figure out how to do um, equity audits for free for people, like energy equity audits, energy audits for the town of Amherst. Um, so we're putting together um, preliminary, it's very preliminary, but we're putting together um, an agenda. We're kind of starting some meetings to try to figure out how we go about it. Will we do like a door by door or will we have like people sign up, send out a web link, <clears throat> whatnot. Um, but that is something that we are very interested in doing, given the fact that Massachusetts is kind of one of the leading states in energy transition right now. Um, we want not just people in these spheres that we are in to have access to that information, but we also want to be able to help them understand what that information is useful for. So um, I know like when you ever, if you ever get solar panels installed, um, they'll come in and they'll show you the difference that you can make um, if you went, if you transition to solar um, or like your uh, net metering. Um, but what we're interested in doing is not just looking at that, but looking at like um, how much energy is your stove consuming of your bill um, while it's on versus while it's not on, things like that. So that is something that we are trying to do um, or trying to put together so that we can implement it in the fall. Um, and in addition to that, I would say the only other really community-based activity that um, or group that I know of doing anything is also inside Elevate. There's a group of students who are interested in doing um, an air quality audit um, oh. through the town of Amherst as well. Um, I, she's a recent um, PhD um, candidate or not. She's like graduated, so she's matriculated, she's done. Um, so she's a recent doctor and it's her kind of research project. And I can put us in contact with her if you guys are interested in getting involved with that. Oh. Um, but her whole research is regarding the air quality um, how much um, that is different when you take into consideration the amount of transportation that we have versus um, homes, things like that. Um, and then in regards to transportation, the only news that I've come across, um, I went to the two meetings ago and I heard that this was in the works, but it, I just also read the update in the news regarding it was that Amherst received funding from the states to make the school buses electric, which I guess is a very huge um, step towards uh, electrifying most of the public transportation vehicles in this um, in the area. So that is what I have in those areas. Okay, Stephanie. This is all really exciting, Tony. Just wondering if you're going to share information with the town, like sort of results or ways that we can, or is there going to be recommendations to the town? And if there's programs that sort of um, would complement what you're doing, are you going to try to work with the town on sort of, like I'm thinking about the Mass Save outreach stuff and the heat pump program that we have coming up because we have put our RFP out because um, you've been away. So I'm not sure if you know that we've got a response and we're working hopefully towards getting a contract underway with um, someone who I can't say quite yet, but um, if there'll be a way to like partner with what you're doing so that it might get people even farther. Yeah, the first would be, we do want this to be accessible. So part of the project is building a website that people can access um, and they can find their home on it and then they can enter all the information. Of course, it's um, there's security limits to that. Um, and we also have been thinking about ways in which, so say you live in an apartment complex, you don't want it to be used against you either because many landlords um, can dispute things like that. So we actually are more interested in partnering once we have the research done in order to have that kind of, I guess, security blanket in place that allows this research to go forth towards um, good means and good advancements for the common public. So yeah. Um, however, I think right now we're still kind of in the phase of figuring out how we're going to do it. But I do know that the long-term goal, according to Michael, who is um, the leading director of the project, he's very interested in partnering with like solar companies, energy companies, local governing bodies, and also um, like housing facilities. So it is a partnered project in the end run. 
This is super exciting. Oh, I just have one quick, one more quick follow up with that. I'm also part of a New England sustainability network that's all municipal sustainability officials in the New England region. We just had a meeting last week, and this is something that they would be so super interested in. So um, I yeah. know once you have it up and running or when you're done, we should. I would love to be in contact with you and folks on this initiative to sort of help share that information to the group too. They'd love it. Preliminary wise, I could give you, I could, after this meeting, I can send an email to you with uh, Michael and Krista's contact information to the leaders of the whole energy system, that project that we're doing, um, just because they, they're they academics um, in their career, so they may not have as much knowledge or access about how things work in the local politics area. Mm -hmm. So that partnership initially would also be very beneficial. That's awesome. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, I, I actually, so uh, Steve, I see your hand up, but I want to use the chair's uh, prerogative here to ask a bunch of questions um, that I want to understand. So um, I... I um, I hear you, I hear, I'd love to know a little bit more about what an energy audit is. What, what I'm a little worried about here is if that there are too many people approaching the same group, they're going to tune out. And this is probably the same group to, uh, who is being, will be targeted by the heat pump RFP. Um, and there is already in place in the state of vol volunteer organizations who are doing um, well, there's now SAVE, which is doing energy audits, and there's also, which which would, they would have to do anyway, and there's also uh, the need for energy coaching, which is maybe different from an audit, and I'm wondering what you mean by an energy audit and how that fits into this and complements it rather than makes people do the work twice. Um, also, the same thing with a website. A website is something that's going to go up for the town, um, and there are some really good examples of this. I, I talked a little bit about one last time. I, I went to a a meeting of the Heat Smart Alliance that had the Wellesley Energy Program administrator talking about how their heat, comp, heat, heat pump coaching program works and how their auditing program works. And, uh, you know, they have a beautiful website where you go online and you say, yeah, I want, I want someone to tell me what to do. And they send someone out to a volunteer out to come look at your place and, and tell you, step you through the whole process. And so there's no duplication of effort. That person puts you in contact with Mass Safe, puts you in contact with you know, it goes right down the list and gets you from point A to point B. Um, mm -hmm. So how is this, what do you mean by an energy audit and how does it fit into that scheme that's already available out there? Um, the first part of that I can answer. Um, one, it's preliminary. So by energy audit, I mean, we're developing a way to do an energy audit. Don't know what it actually looks like in the end run because it's very preliminary. However, I can say that the energy audit is sourced in the fact that the we did a Holyoke energy outreach project it's part of Elevate's huge thing where we actually do energy education. Um, and so we've actually found that though there are websites and though there are these accessible means, the target audience for the projects that we've been doing don't, don't know this information, don't have, or they say they don't have access to it because a lot of them are elderly um, and the internet isn't as accessible to them as they think it is. Or a lot of them live in um, apartment complexes together. Um, whereby they kind of have the same problem. So that's the baseline for how we've developed the energy audit, because many of them through our education projects and processes have displayed that they don't really know how energy works in their own homes. So that's what our energy audit is looking to do is not so much as like compare it and or tell you that you should switch to a different service or anything, but just to keep you informed about how energy is functioning within your home and or your building complex. But again, it's very preliminary. Um, and then as far as the website, the website will come after the energy equity audit. So that's also something I can't really answer yet because it's also still preliminary. We should talk offline because I do think this sounds like something that ought to be done in conjunction with, you know, a heat smart energy coach. You can step them through the whole process as well as so that there's not a duplication of. Again, uh, I'm not the director or leader of it. I'm just a participant in it. Yeah, um, who who so is that? Michael, somebody? Michael and Krista Pfeiffer. They are the leaders of the Elevate program on campus and also the Ener Holyoke Energy Project, um, which is the people I will send to Stephanie because um, okay, cool. they might have more information actually on all of this. They may even already have partnered with many places to get this information, um, but yeah. Okay, and uh, Steve? Yeah, this I think this sounds great, and um, 
especially sort of the general nature, starting at a very basic level for folks, because I yeah, I have found people get confused fairly quickly. You're just talking about energy and power. Um, people's eyes start to glaze over. So that sounds great. I was curious about, you said the air quality monitoring. Is that, do you think indoor air quality? Yes, it is indoor air quality. So like associated with kitchens and gas yeah. burning appliances? Oh, excellent. Good, good. But again, that one, uh, I'm just a participant. Yeah. Um, so I can also send that information once I have that information. But yeah, that one is, there's a lot of outdoor air quality in the area. And so her whole thing was like, we should actually look inside of houses as well. Yes. That would be really useful. That would be great. Um, okay. And it's a great yeah. project. It has a lot of support and a lot of funding behind it. So I assume it'll it'll be good for the area. There's been, yeah, as you know, probably in others, there's a lot of reports coming out about bad indoor air quality, particularly in smallish apartments. Mm -hmm. with unventilated kitchens burning fossil gas fuels yes. can really make air quality bad not only in the kitchen but down the hall and in the bedrooms and so the that the awareness of that is growing rapidly so i know that she was also interested in like air conditioners like window installed because the rise in the heat um a lot of people have opted to like put multiple in their home and she's also interested in how that's affecting air quality so it's a great project i think yeah excellent good That's that's really exciting, and I will um, reach out some more on that one because that that's great. Um, thank you very much, Tony. Of course. Um, okay, that brings us to the heat pumps. I don't have a lot to add um, except that I did reach out to the. There is a group um, in Northampton that is putting together or trying to put together an energy coaching program there that I thought was going to be broader. So I was a little surprised when I realized they were just talking about Northampton. So I just sent an inquiry whether or not they're considering doing this over the broader area. Cat, not destroying that. Not there. Sorry, cat is destroying furniture. <laughs> um, so uh, I put out some, some feelers there to see what they're actually up to and to try to get um, a little more tied into that. On a personal note, I'm actually heading up to Greenfield to do my second official energy coaching job, <laughs> my volunteer job on uh, Wednesday in that in the heat. Um, and I'm finding it very interesting just to learn about all of the issues around here and all of the different configurations of houses and all the problems that need to be solved to actually make this happen. I'm really happy to be able to help make the transition happen. Um, other than that, I think Stephanie might have a little more to say about heat pump program. Um, not too much, actually. Um, I will say that we had two proposals. I think I may have told you that. Um, one of them we deemed um, insufficient information and not eligible because they didn't meet the minimum criteria. So the other application was our proposal was actually fairly robust and we're um, in communication with that entity and I'm hoping that we'll be able to uh, come up with an agreement, but until we sign a contract, I can't announce who they are. So um, I will keep you posted, but I think we're close. Yeah, that's great. Uh... And that's all I got. I don't have anything more about climate resilient schools. Um, we might even consider taking that off the, I haven't just haven't heard anything from them and I don't see anything going on in the Slack channel either. So um, I don't know where that is. Um, on to advisory and support, any other education and outreach issues? Actually, we could talk about, um, oh wait, wait, is Don back? Don. Anything? I, I know you said they probably wouldn't, but well, I, I'm back. But as I told you at our last meeting, I I yeah. left the next day for my 50th reunion in college, right, and right, then right. went right to Maine on vacation. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> so nothing more on on pace. Um, somebody, please remind me. I didn't see it in the minutes. Maybe I missed it. There was an idea for a upcoming educational series while we're on education and outreach, or a, a, a what was that on? Um, Stephanie, do you remember? There was something that was going to, maybe it was around pace, maybe it was around. Um, I don't 
remember specifically. I think what we were saying was that when the heat pump program launches, that PACE will be part of the narrative when our consultant is doing the outreach to the community. Right. Didn't we want to start doing educational series again? And there was a particular topic. I just don't remember don't what remember that either. was. And I don't know that I had it in my minutes. All right, I will look it up for next time. Because it was interesting and I wanted to pursue it. Um, next time, education program. All right. Um, and without further ado, if there's anything else on education and outreach anyone wants to bring up, if not, we'll move on to advisory and support. Um, Steve, any more updates on the rental bylaw? I think we covered it last week, but. Um, nothing significant at this point. I The portal, the web-based application for rental permits is opened. I went through that today. It does not ask about um, energy efficiently related questions. Um, so those are coming, I guess, hopefully will be coming when inspectors do in-person inspections. Um, so hopefully, as we talked last time, that will that'll happen and uh, inspectors will gather some quality data that will accumulate over time. Uh, right. Um... Anything else on that? Anything well, I I have in mind sometime over the summer to kind of pull together the knowledge that I've gained while working on this project for the last couple of years and bring that back to ECAC. Uh, sort of here's some of the different routes that we could take to try to improve energy efficiency of buildings. And that could be rental properties, rental housing, but I'll also see what's out there that other communities have used for other kinds of buildings. So I'll look into this. There's the um, couple of resources that provide some, some good lists of what other communities have done and how they're going. So I'll bring that back to ECAC probably towards the end of the summer. And then we can decide if the, any of those look like something we want to pursue. Great. Thanks, Steve. Anything else? In that case, um, on to solar. Dwayne. Um, I guess I would just mention that um, the Western Mass Solar Forum, um, all of our materials are on the website now. I believe including the recording that came in today. I, I believe that's up on the website. If not, it will be in a day. Um, I'll also mention there was a actually a nice article that uh, in the Gazette this morning, front page, um, on the um, that really had to do with the the purpose of the forum, which was really to help stimulate conversation and conversation with state legislators and state agencies on the um, climate bill um, and language within the climate bill, uh, particularly with regard to solar siting. Um, and that was the gist of this article, uh, talking about the um, the climate bill. Uh, a lot of work still is going into that. Uh, there isn't really any transparency of what's in there yet, uh, but um, it did use the solar forum discussion um, to articulate um, probably f uh, in highlighting four or five maybe of our different speakers uh, on comments, uh, concerns, uh, in in uh, in in uh, in some cases, certainly about um, diminished local control on solar decision making. Um, uh, again, I think there's some uh, confusion with regard to this this the 25 megawatt uh, um, threshold for projects, which are greater than that, are more substantially in the control of the state. Uh, versus most of the solar projects, which will be under that, uh, still has some streamlining by the state, but still under local control. Uh, but there's some questions about that. Uh, and then also some of the storage projects are also, are um, 
especially some of the standalone storage projects are um, north of uh, 25 megawatts. And I think it was the Wendell project that was highlighted uh, maybe in a separate article. I can't remember if that was the same article or not, or a different article in the, in the same uh, paper this morning. Um, so um, uh, just keep, keep, uh, keep that in mind. And um, uh, I'm not sure, you know, again, as this climate bill starts to, be um, lang actual language starts to come out. That's something that this group might want to um, dig into or find other forms that are discussing and engage with other forms that are sort of discussing that language to the more to the lay person as opposed to the within within the um, legislators. All right, thank you, Dwayne. Any comments, questions, other notes? Steve, anything? No. Okay, and I had promised to follow up on the um, status of the various uh, citing bills, and I haven't done that, so uh, we'll put that sounds from, from Duane like they're still in progress anyway, so I will um, try to keep an update on that for next time. Um, now, Laura is not here today, so we'll skip the next thing. And that brings us to Reflections on ECAC Membership by Dwayne and Jesse, both of whom are at their last meeting. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna cry. <laughs> how are we gonna how are we gonna do without you guys? Um so uh who wants to start? I'm 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 afraid that Jesse has some prepared comments, <laughs> prepared remarks, and I don't. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm happy either way. I did think about it a little bit. Um, yeah. Not not much. Um, I think the the um, the broader conversation of how to sort of facilitate and maintain. Um, the, the sort of consistency and in knowledge and institutional knowledge and you know a, a, a committee that is designed to be sort of intermittent and recycled. Um, so what I did was I, um, I actually went back and looked at, kind of did a scan from 2019 to 2024 when we were in the committee the last five years. And I think couple of things. One is don't forget all the great work that's been done that you're doing. I think at times for all of us, we overestimate what we can get done in a day and underestimate what we can get done in a year or five years. Um, there's a lot of good work in there. It's a hard job and, and I highly recommend that you try to make each other laugh during these meetings. Um, and my preferred method is corny dad jokes. Um, just going to throw that out there as sort of like a coping mechanism. I've got two other quick things to say. One is I, I looked at the difference of what I was calling sort of reactive work versus generative work. And to me, it was a very salient theme. Um, we generated dozens and dozens of matrices and spreadsheets and, and charts and summaries. And I think they were useful for a lot of the thinking that we were doing. And I think we supported ourselves doing that work, but I don't think it was quite as um, potent as some of the reactive work and really, which I would include, you know, which means sort of like a body and a mind sort of hearing what someone else is saying and giving their, their feedback and thinking Dwayne on the solar bylaw committee, some of the work, um, was an example Stephanie mentioned to me. Um, and I think seeking out those opportunities and, and, sh and, you know, the way that we've helped Stephanie with RFPs or things like that, where someone gives us something, we give an opinion. I think those felt to me like some of the most, a good leverage point for a, a committee. Um, not that the gen or supporting the climate action plan, like the feedback that we gave during the course of the climate action plan, I think was great. Um, one of the generative pieces of work that I thought was incredible was we also did a 
just a tremendous amount of outreach. Um, and it was, and if you look back on that, that boots on the ground outreach, and I think the, the ones that really seemed to be the most potent were the ones that were in person um, and connecting with other people and sort of hearing their ideas, bringing them in, bringing them back to this group. So re reactive versus generative. The other piece is I'm going to make a press or a pitch just because this is my last chance to speak publicly to this group of sort of consider this difference between technological and cultural um, thinking. Um, I think that not to forget about the cultural pieces of, of what we're doing um, about like ourselves and our souls and our worldviews and how that, how, what that change looks like as opposed to um, some of the technological solutions, which are not bad, but need to be put into a cultural context. And the perfect example is the idea of an equity energy assessment that I heard this morning, as opposed to just an energy assessment. It's like exactly, um, I was just like, I can't believe I'm leaving this committee. I just heard that, that that's happening. Um, and then finally, I'm going to make a pitch for a book that I've been reading. Um, if you haven't seen this one, it's a it's a good one for our own just sort of education. Um, it's called The Carbon Footprint of Everything. And I think it's it'll helps us. It would help. I think it's just a good. It's a good grounding book. Um, Who's the author? Mike Berners Lee hyphenated. Yeah. Um, it's, I think, I think it, with the limited time that we have to do the work, sort of understand where, what are the, it, it basically divides emissions and the things we do into categories sort of like by orders of magnitude. And, and I think it, it helps, it's, I think it's helpful to sort of, to think about, um, getting on airplanes, things like that. There's, <laughs> as compared, you know, it, it's a good one. And and I just think everyone on this committee would like it. And in conclusion, thank you all so much for this being a, a place I've looked forward to, to going to on Zoom every few weeks. So we'll miss you all very much. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you very much. Uh, Dwayne. Yep. Yeah, uh, great. Uh, thanks, Jesse. Uh, what, what Jesse said, and uh, I'll put in <clears throat> a few other things. Um, uh, first, sort of reflecting on our work and and uh, my background, I didn't look uh, too much in detail um, at the um, uh, the details of what we accomplish and 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 sort of the 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 um, um, whether it was um, proactive or 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 um, I forget the terminology used, Jesse. There, but um, reactive. Reactive, um, but um, you know, over well over a hundred meetings, uh, which has been a wonderful opportunity to um, meet and work closely with all of you. Um, uh, longer for some some of you than than others. Um, we started off. The, the process um, with setting the targets that um, Lori reflects on each and, and brings up each to start each meeting. Um, I think it's important to, um, well, first recognize that that's kind of the, a great place to start, but it's also really easy uh, to do um, and that um, our work should continue to um, maintain that metric in mind and to um, track the progress over time. I know uh, Stephanie, um, that's a pro that's a process in itself, um, uh, and is being done uh, periodically. And I think there's a, a a greenhouse gas inventory in the works or soon to be in the works. So uh, just important to um, keep the eye on that target <clears throat> uh, and goals, and to see and reflect and um, um, respond to. The outcomes of uh, of that metric over time, uh, 
for better or for worse. Um, I also, you know, the, the, the goals that we set are, are, um, I'm not sure if they're precisely, but they're very much in sync with the state as well. Uh, uh, pretty aggressive targets. Um, so it does call in the question of whether we lead or just ride the tide of the state and wait for, wait for, uh, electrification to happen and then say we've done it too. Uh, and that's, um, that can be a, a, a hindrance to making progress at a local level. Um, and so just encourage folks to really keep um, uh, in mind that the state's not going to meet these targets if local communities don't aggressively meet these targets as well. Um, and I'm, you know, constantly in various different ways thinking about this whole climate emergency and, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a global problem. It's a country problem. It's a state problem. It's a community problem and it's an individual problem. And all of those need to be firing on all engines, I guess. Um, of course, renewably fueled ones um, <clears throat> to, um, uh, to, to make, make it work on all those levels. Um, uh, and ultimately it does come in, in my mind, well, High, high level policy important from nation and states, but action is really at the community and individual level. Uh, so um, it, it, with that in mind, the work of ECAC and the town are really, really important to meet uh, not only our own goals, but the commonwealths and the world's. Uh, so really important work. Um, I actually wrote this down as a reflection before I heard from Tony this morning or, or Tony this this uh, moments ago, uh, I was going to suggest to continue and, exp and, and uh, expand sort of our engagement with our schools, uh, high schools, but also our um, um, uh, institutes of higher education, not just UMass, but the other institutions too can bring um, students um, in, in uh, public service learning. Uh, activities, which is a win-win situation. Uh, uh, sounds like Elevate <clears throat> is on that, which is wonderful to hear. Look forward to hearing that from, from the UMass's side as well um, and how, how um, I can be helpful on, on that. <clears throat> um, but really um, great opportunities. Uh, and that's sort of a differentiating factor, quite frankly, of Amherst is the extent to which we have um, academic institutions, um, but I wouldn't, I'd also very much include the high school um, in that as well. Um, I would say that, you know, looking at the next year and two years, um, and, and Stephanie's obviously will be the guiding gu guidance on this, but uh, the, the, the upcoming opportunity with the launch of the Valley Green Energy, I think I had that name correct, uh, aggregation, for the town uh, and the broader region, Pelham, Northampton, um, will I think um, uh, be a motivator, educational and motivator for town and, and uh, familiarity, more familiarity and uh, common discussions about energy issues around town. So I would really look at that as an opportunity to build on that momentum um, and, and build upon simple electric, you know, uh, choosing a different energy supplier or, or, or opting, not opting out of, of a new electric uh, supplier. But as the Valley Green Energy um, broader mission provides is really ECAC and the other, our, our, um, lo, uh, our partner communities working on other um, innovative energy um, affiliated programs uh, that can um uh, move forward energy efficiency, locally uh, owned and operated uh, uh, um, energy projects as well. I think that's a great opportunity for ECAC to shine um, and, and provide value added to the town in that area over the next uh, com coming year, year and two. Um, I also wanted to make a pitch for um, any role that ECAC can, can provide as we are, uh, but so this is just sort of continuation, some of these focus areas on um, larger scale project opportunities. Um, again, I think this work that uh, Steve and others have been leading with regard to um, 
uh, our housing ap apartments um, and, and trying to, you know, work with apartment complexes, rental, and I'm particularly thinking of the larger um, rental uh, housing units uh, to try to um, move opportunities um, in aggregate together uh, and maybe a little bit more leverage working with these larger users than, than uh, uh, working house to house. Um, the other thing that comes to mind is, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of interest in geo, geo, uh, geo exchange and, uh, um, district, uh, or community scale geo exchange, um, uh, you know, opportunities to connect the schools together, uh, on that, the, 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 the core, the town core, uh, for example, uh, things that are very much at a early conceptual stage, but maybe areas that ECAC could take an interest in and, and, um, and work with, um, some student group at Elevate or UMass to look at it at a very conceptual level to start. Um, uh, close, I guess, in my reflection is just more personal uh, to say that it's been wonderful to um, get to know everybody, uh, past and current um, members of this committee, um, spending two hours together every other week it used to be in person for a short period of time. That was good, um, uh, but this is convenient. <laughs> um, uh, has been really rewarding and and fun, um, and uh, and interesting. I've learned a lot. Um, I think we have a, a diversity of of ideas and and uh, backgrounds um, and approaches to things, and really appreciate that. Uh, uh, and I've taken. Um, lessons learned from that uh, away from this group as well. Uh, and then also uh, maybe just for thinking about recruiting new members. Um, this has been a wonderful opportunity to, to give back a little bit to the town that I have lived in for a long time and love to live in. Um, and um, there should be a lot of other people out there that are uh, able and willing to, uh, to, to find find the time and interest to give back a little bit to the town um, in, in this area. So, um, uh, you know, good, good, you know, I'll, I'll be spreading the word that there's vacancies uh, and they should contact the town. Um, but uh, uh, just if, if you have the opportunity, tell them that it's very rewarding uh, to, to um, work with such wonderful people, uh, like-minded people, uh, but with, varied interests and backgrounds, uh, but also it's wonderful to give back to the town. So appreciate the opportunity to serve. Um, and um, thank you for the, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, Stephanie dropped by, uh, gave me, <laughs> Jesse's ready with the fork. I was gonna show show this little, this nice, beautiful cake with a nice thank you on it um, and a nice card, which I can hold up here. Um, it means a lot. Um, it'll mean a lot to my wife too when she gets home and sees what I put in the refrigerator. Um, so thank you all for that. Um, and thanks for. Um, I don't. I don't know what I'll do every other week for two hours, but uh, I'll find something to do. <laughs> thank you. Dave. All right, and I'll, I'll. I will. You know, as I mentioned to Stephanie, I'm. I'm. I'm still a town member. Still live in town. Uh, still interested in this area. Still work in this area. So um, I'm definitely. Um, an available resource uh, to the town and the and the committee. Thank you very much, Dwayne and Jesse. I really I feel very inadequate trying to chair this committee without you guys here, but uh, we have other folks. I hope everyone will step up and uh, we'll find some new members. And I hope you enjoy your ECAC retirement. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> retirement i like that yeah. <laughs> i think you i think you guys are doing fantastic um and just remember it's this is work is wonderfully impossible yeah <laughs> you, you honestly you cannot do it wrong because otherwise it's not being done so yeah do something yeah all right um so with that uh any other comments or questions for our for our retiring members, if not, I will move on um, 
to the next agenda item, <laughs> which is staff updates. Thanks, Lori. Um, so I had something in my head and that's just totally left me, but I can just very quickly run over some of what we're doing, which is um, the, the CCA effort will probably launch in November. We have a couple of meetings. Oh, that's because of the timing, which isn't a bad thing. It's got to do with um, timing of having like the bid proposal date nailed down. And then there's this other like in, um, um, price, like another pricing, a preliminary pricing meeting that has to happen before that date. So getting those set up and given the summer schedules with the executives and the communities, um, that's probably not going to happen till July, mid-July. Um, so in order for the program to actually launch, it'll probably take us into November, but that's okay. Um, again, I have so much faith in our consultant that we're working with, uh, Mass Power Choice. Paul Gromer is amazing. He knows what he's doing. I I really don't question him a lot, to be honest. Um, he does well for his clients. So um, so that's kind of probably some of the biggest news. Uh, Valley Bike, I don't know when it's actually going to show up on the streets in Amherst. I will say that the main station in town is the, uh, at least for the municipal side, not the UMass side, but the municipal side, our kiosk is actually the, the station that's right in the town common, which is obviously as if you've driven by, you can see that it's under construction, um, but the the stub is there for the electrical connection. And so um, it's gonna be beautiful when it's all done. And I really think where the bikes are gonna be situated is gonna be much nicer than what we had before. So hopefully that will be, I'm, I'm optimistically hoping by like the end of July, it'll all be in and the town will be up and functioning. Um, but again, I can't really guarantee. And remember that it's also not the full network of bikes. This is only what's been salvageable from the prior program. And as I mentioned before, we're gonna be integrating some of the newer technology from Drop Mobility, their bikes, their system. So over time, it will evolve to be like a completely new um, look and um, hardware, software, you know, affiliated with Drop Mobility. So that's coming. Um, and then let's see, CCA. Um, and then the RFP, I think I already gave you the update. I'm hoping that um, I'm going on vacation for two weeks. So I'll be gone. I'm leaving Saturday. I'll be out of the, you know, out of the country for two weeks. And then I'll um, be back. And I'm hoping that when I get back, the contract will have been, either ready for draft and signature uh, by that time. So I'm hoping like to at least start moving that process towards that effort. Um, other than that, I think those are kind of the biggest things right now. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm looking forward to the CCA, looking forward to the bikes. I'm sorry, Larry, I did think, remember what it was because this is kind of big. It's the yeah. decarbonization plan. I think I had um, talked to you about applying to become a climate leader community through yes. Green Communities Program. This is like Green P Communities 2.0. Um, so we we do have the consultant. We were awarded the technical assistance. And so I spoke to the um, technical assistance provider and they we will be meeting with them when I get back from vacation, but the facilities manager has not been available. So until he's available, we'll meet when we get back, but really excited to be working with them. They were very thrilled to get our um, building HVAC inventory that Miguel worked on last summer. Very happy to have that. So um, they have a lot of information already that because we've been sort of working towards getting this data together, really happy to be able to just sort of take it and run with it. So, um, and by the end of the summer, we'll have our fleet vehicle GHG inventory as well. So that'll give them a lot to work with. Um, and that will require us to work, me primarily, to work on the narrative piece of that plan, but they will be doing the technical piece. So um, just wanted to give an update about that too. Thanks, Stephanie. Member updates? Not I have one I want to share. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Hold on a minute. Um, so 
I mentioned this last time, but I just wanted to show this because it's something that always bothers me that uh, I will be sending this also to the, um, I'm not I haven't quite figured out who the right person to send it to in the town is, but I think there's a link for stuff like this. Um, I put together a little, I'm putting together a little photo essay of what biking around the area looks like. <laughs> I ride about 100 miles a week in the summer. Um, I go out three times a week, roughly 30 or 40 miles each time. And I always have to leave from my neighborhood. And when I leave from my neighborhood, I have to go on Pelham Road. And Pelham Road is terrifying on bicycle. Um, let you guys back where I can see you. Where'd you go? Here you are. Um, Ah, I lost it. I'm sorry. I don't want everybody to see all of that. I wanted, I wanted this. There we go. And it should go right to that. Yes. So this is what Pelham Road looks like heading into Amherst, uh, less than a mile from the intersection at Northeast Southeast Street near Fort River Elementary. Um, it's a very fast moving road. There's a small margin, which used to be rideable near it or on it. And this is the only sign <laughs> for bikes on Pelham Road. And that's what it looks like. Um, if you look at the road itself, the pothole machine that the town lauded so much when they got it a few years ago has made a disaster of the road in that every time they fill a pothole, they make the margin less and less usable. It's always filled with gravel. It's got bumps all over it. I ride a road bike and this is very difficult to navigate. Coming through the intersection is terrifying. I'm always worried I'm gonna wipe out in the middle of traffic. It's all gravel here. Um, and of course, grates. <laughs> and when you go into Turner's Falls, for example, and I do see some of these in Amherst now. I haven't seen the one on Bay Road yet, but I have seen one on Route 63. So I know Amherst is now doing it. There are these nice, give motorists four feet to pass signs, which as someone pointed out to me, really isn't what you want. What you want is a sign that says only pass when safe, right? People don't know that they have to treat a bike like a vehicle and only pass when it's safe to pass. So they try to get around you regardless. Um, the other option that is used is these things, which I think I heard someone refer to as sharrows. I'm not quite sure what that means, but these bike signs on the road which indicate that bikes have every right to be there. And I think are probably the most, the best way to mark a bike place where bikes go. Um, any rate, I thought I would show that because Pelham Road is sadly lacking that. And I will be sending this to the town. Um, like I say, I'll figure out what link I need to send it to, but Pelham Road in particular, there was already at least one death on it some years ago. Um, I really don't want there to be another. I'd like people to feel safe riding bicycles. I've now seen plenty of folks now take their kids to and from work on those big Netherlands style bikes with the two, you know, with the kids sitting in the back or in the front, this huge long bike. And they do Pelham Road on that going very slowly. And it's, it's a little terrifying to see. Um, anyway, something that needs to be fixed. Other updates? Yeah, Laurie, so building off of that, I remember, I forget, maybe it was like the first weekend the farmer's market was open back in April, but I remember there were some students out there getting signatures, um, specifically around Amherst Pelham Road, and they were targeting the sidewalk on the other side of the street that you were, that you were just showing a picture of, because if you look at that sidewalk, like, it's bad, and then... Also, everybody's mailboxes are on the sidewalk. So it's really like not even accessible. Yeah. Um, and I forget the name of the group that was that was out there trying to gather signatures for this petition, but it specifically was around this Amherst Pelham Road and, and letting kids bike down that street to get to school. Um, yeah. You can't yeah. take the bike on the sidewalk because people put their mailboxes in cement some five gallon containers yeah. with cement cemented into the container so that when somebody hits it, they just pick it up again. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's terrifying. The sidewalk on the other side is unusable by almost anyone. Um, any rate. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Don. Yeah. I, um, I'm going to try to do this. I, I rolled into this 
relatively small town in mid coast Maine um, called Damascata. Um, and there's a big sign when you come into the town from the north and it advertises the community climate workshops for this little town. And they had one in the beginning of June and they have one this week while I'm here. So I'm actually gonna try to go and see just how this town conducts these workshops. Um, I I was just fascinated by it. So if I can get in, I'll let you know how that um, how those community client workshops happen and what goes on. Yeah, Maine has the highest adoption of heat pumps of anywhere in the nation. So I would love to know what they're doing. Um, and that is the sort of thing that, you know, if we can figure out a way to hold workshops that also involve kids in schools helping out, I'm going to I'm going to have a, I hope I will have a class in the fall called, um, you know, on the, the per, your personal energy transition, right? How to, how to save the world and kick the fossil fuel habit. Um, <laughs> and I'm hoping that I can train a bunch of students to go out and talk about this stuff, right? So um, it would be nice to figure out what these towns are doing that they have such a high adoption rate. Um, anyone else? If not, let's see, we go back to our um, items for the next meeting agenda. Um, I think I mentioned one thing about figuring out what that, thinking about uh, future workshops. There was something that I will look up and get, I'll talk to you, Stephanie, I'm sure I can find it in my notes. Um, but other than that, and the usual agenda, anyone have anything else they wanna see on the agenda? When in, when is our next meeting again? Can oh. we review that real quick? July seventeenth. July seventeenth. Yeah, not for not for a month, and then we're back to our usual. Um, let's see. Let me make sure I have that in the right place here. Um, it's every we'll, two weeks. Yeah. So July seventeenth, right? So we're skipping. The one that would normally be on the third. That's this one. That's this one, right? Mm -hmm. um, Actually, I'm sorry. We had it, one scheduled for this Wednesday, so that's the 19th. Is this one? Right, right. So we're, we're just skipping, skipping the third. That's we're the only one we're really one. skipping. Exactly. We're skipping one meeting, and then we'll be back on the 17th at the usual time. Um. Okay, other than that, I guess, Stephanie, you and I can talk about it at our next meeting for the agenda. And now we are to public comment, but I still see we have no attendees. Um, so I think we are, oh, yeah, I don't need to say that. I had, I had one other small update, but it's not a big deal. Can we? Um, Laurie, I was just gonna say, can we give folks an opportunity to say something to oh, yeah. Dwayne and Jesse? Yes. They spoke, but I just thought it might be nice for people to say something for them before they go, seeing that we have time. Well, I mean, I can certainly say that I am a better person for knowing both of you and have gotten so much and learned so much from both of you. I have no idea, like I said, how, how this committee's going to look with you gone. And I hope I will see you around Amherst. I know I'll see you, Dwayne, because you're in my neighborhood. But Jesse, I have to go like the other side of town to see you. So, Well, you could every... Every uh, spring, come and get the the tent for the sustainability. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, this committee has a life a lifelong rights to that tent. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? I'll jump in if. Well, no, let Steve go. And, yeah, I guess uh, a big thank you to you guys as uh, founding members of the ECAC. Um, we've come a long ways, as you guys both uh, reflected. And um, I hope you, yeah, thank, thanks for all that and all your different perspectives that we'll try to carry forward. And Jesse, the um, that tropical plant that you put out in front of your house that said, the sign on it that said, save me, it's growing happily in one of my classrooms at Hampshire College. So <laughs> thank you for that too. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah I hope to run into you guys around town. <laughs> yeah. Stephanie, oh, uh, Don. Oh, you got to mute. I got yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks, Jesse. You were the first person to introduce me to the uh, to this committee as we walked around Hampshire College um, those years ago, um, and it's been wonderful. And and Dwayne, you know, everything comes in circles. We spent a lot of time on athletic fields when our kids were younger, and and it's been great reconnecting with you in this. So thanks. Sorry about the dog barking. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I just want to kind of reiterate kind of what everybody else has been saying. Like, yeah, I really, I mean, for me, I really appreciate um, like the knowledge you all brought, you all brought to, to this group around your specific expertise in, in those areas. Um, it's been a pleasure to get to meet you and know you over the last short time period for me. Uh, but hopefully that's just the start um, and that, you know, in other areas and around town and initiatives that are going on, hopefully, you know, we cross paths again in other arenas of that sort. So, um, yeah, enjoy your two hours every other week off. I hope you use it very productively. <laughs> right. Also, on that note, no one tell my family that I've left the committee. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> I don't know how I'm. Gonna, I'm not good at stupid dad jokes, Jesse. I'm just not. I mean, someone else needs to be in charge of that. Any bad joke will do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stephanie, go ahead. I think. Sure. I just. Um wanted to say, first of all, that you two are always welcome to help out at the Sustainability Festival whenever you want to so that you don't feel so disconnected. <laughs> We'd love to have you. Um, but honestly, just for me, I, I just can't even begin to thank you, uh, both of you, for all you've done, um, all the extra that you've done. Duane, what you did with the Solar Bylaw Working Group was just such a huge, huge lift. And I'm so grateful to you for being willing to, to go there, especially when you started by saying, I don't really want to chair the committee. <laughs> and then you ended up getting roped into doing it. So thank you, because I don't, I don't know that we could have gotten through it um, with such level headed, sort of open and calm and considerate perspective of all viewpoints you know I think you did a great job of navigating that so thank you um, and Jesse just all the work you did um, you know on the the code the specialized code you know thank you so much for that and all the other things you've done over the over the time to sort of help make our outreach more fun I feel like when it got fun was when you came up with some cool ideas so um, thank you so much both of you and you will be sorely missed, but we know where to find you. And I know that I will be reaching out to you for sure in the future, at least as long as I'm here. So we'll look forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And with that, then, um, I guess this meeting is adjourned. Have a good July, June, July vacation, everyone. Have a great Enjoy. month, everybody. Enjoy yeah, the heat. Thank wave. you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Stay cool. Bye. Bye. <laughs>